Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of our uh, Lunchtime Learning Sustainability Series here. My name is Brendan Woodruff. I'm the co-chair of the Green New York Operations and Engagement Subcommittee, and I'd like to uh, give a thanks and a shout out to everyone. This is our 12th edition, so we've officially been at this for a year. I'd like to thank everybody for taking part in it. Uh, if, you, if there are previous webinars you'd like to watch, you can watch them on the Green New York website. And as part of that, I'm also happy to announce today that uh, we are announcing the next six months of topics. Uh, they are up on the Green New York website now, so you can register for those. And again, they're always on the second Tuesday of the month at noon. Uh, the next six topics are going to be reducing food waste, climate-friendly eating, solar for your home, choosing green cleaning and personal care products, climate-friendly AC and refrigerants, and water conservation. So if any of those interest you, make sure to go to the website and um, uh, register for those and get those on your calendar. A couple quick housekeeping things before we get into the, to today's program. Uh, everyone is on mute when you join the webinar. For questions, type them into the chat box and we'll get to those at the end. What we'll do is um, type them in whenever you think of them and then when we get to the end, I'll read them off to our presenter. Uh, this webinar is also being recorded so you can watch it on the Green New York website afterwards or if you'd like to share it with others, you can find it there. And um, just a quick Halloween tip here is uh, we're getting into spooky season. Um, there's nothing scarier than single-use plastic pollution or wasted energy. So uh, when you're thinking about decorating for your parties, think about how you can reuse. Um, if you're looking at lighting and things like that, think about how you can make it energy efficient and uh, we'll make sure that we're not scaring anyone with uh, the amount of waste we're generating this uh, spooky season. So um, with that, I'm going to introduce our presenter for today, uh, Carolyn Scabelli from National Grid. And she's going to be talking to everybody about energy efficiency for renters. So take it away. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. So I am the program manager for downstate New York residential and multifamily, which is perfect for the renters. Let me go to my next slide. So just so you know, the downstate New York service tour is all of Long Island. Uh, parts of Queens, Brooklyn, and Staten Island. I know we have callers on the line from other parts of New York. And just to let you know up front, too, that every utility has, um, you know, programs, energy efficiency for renters, homeowners, uh, any customer that you are. So please always go directly to the website for your local utility and uh, you can just type in energy efficiency and it will bring up a host of information on different programs. Uh, we are also in upstate New York service territory also. Uh, you'll see we have electric and gas in that territory, whereas downstate we're only gas. So I just thought I'd mention that also. Okay. So we have something that is great. It's called the Renters Checklist, something that we use throughout New York State. We feel that it's really important that as a renter, um, people usually look at, well, what are the accommodations? You know, is it a newer uh, apartment? Is there a parking spot? But we also want our uh, renters to start looking at energy efficiency. You know, what is the utility information? What's your average bills? Um, is there a master meter for the apartment or do you pay the bill? So all important questions to ask, what type of equipment, how old it is, uh, what kind of appliances there are, the energy star, um, is there new windows, insulation, all these things really come into play when you start uh, looking at your uh, residence and when you're starting to uh, find an apartment to live in. I know especially here downstate apartments, uh, rent is very expensive um, downstate. So, you know, when you're paying $3,000 a month, you want to make sure that within that, that you're also getting an efficient, you know, being environmentally sound while you're living in that residence. Okay, so these renters checklists, and um, I know that um, this display will go out to everybody. Uh, if you want any of these mailed to you, you can always contact me. Um, my email is on there too, and I can send some out to you. It's a great little uh, resource to use, really to start having that conversation with the landlord also about, once again, energy efficiency. We look onto that next page, it even has a handy checklist. So you can just start 
kind of checking things off uh, while you go through and you're, and you're talking to the landlord because it is something that's important, especially with insulation. Um, if you go in there and you're looking at an apartment in the summer and they have the AC on, but you, you're looking at the temperature and you know that the temperature of the AC is at 68, that's really low and it's just feeling cool in there. Maybe there's not adequate insulation, which would mean that your winter bills would also be higher because you're gonna to have to crank that heat in the winter time. Um, all of this, whether you pay the bill directly through your rent or you pay it directly to the utility company is gonna make a determination on how much you're paying per month. If uh, the landlord is paying more money, that ultimately is gonna be part of your rent. Maybe not when you first sign up, but the following years. So that's why we suggest that everybody really looks and, and tries to find out um, what kind of accommodations and how the building is when they're moving in. So let's get to the first basic questions um, when you are a renter. So you can, there are two kind of different types. Number one, do you have your own national grid account? So that would mean that each section of that home or each section of uh, that complex has an individual meter. So you're responsible for that meter and for your energy use. So if you have your own national grid account, um, then you are considered at least for national grid downstate and, and for even PSEG for your electric bill and most other utilities. If you're paying your account, your utility bill on your own, you're considered a residential um, customer, okay? So that's number one that you wanna kind of think about. If your utility bill, you don't get an actual utility bill and it's paid by your landlord, then you would be a multifamily customer. And the reason that I'm making this distinction right now is because as we go through um, the presentation, you'll see where if you are responsible for your own bill, you'll be in residential, there's different programs than if you're in a multifamily where the landlord or property manager is paying the actual bill. So this is why I want to make that distinction up front during the first few slides. Um, even in a one to four unit building, um, which is important to note also, um, most of uh, the companies, utility companies, consider multifamily to be five or more units in a building. Okay, so that's also a different distinction also when you start looking at the programs. If it's five or more, it's multifamily, one to four, it's residential. So when I go through the next few slides, I'll make that distinction again as far as rebates go. Okay, so residential rebates. So once again, this is if you get a bill yourself, um, you know, I get a utility bill every month, even though I may live in a huge building or a huge complex, if I get my own utility bill that I'm paying myself, that would be a residential account, townhomes, condos, where you have your own meter and you're responsible for your own usage. This is also for one to four family unit buildings also. So once again, your own bill or one to four family unit is considered residential. So what can you do as a residential customer? Every company has residential prescriptive, it's called incentives, where when you buy a new hot water boiler, a furnace, a water heater, a thermostat for your specific unit, that you can get a rebate if that equipment um, meets the eligibility requirements. It's a certain uh, energy efficiency level, a certain gallon uh, size. There's different parameters depending on the equipment. So in those instances, most times you can just do your application right online. You buy the new equipment, you have it installed, and then you fill out a repay application in order to get a check back in the mail, a prepaid card, 
um, there's a few different selections that you can make to get that money back. And of course, that higher efficiency equipment helps you use less energy, okay, and therefore decreases your bill. Now, a distinction here also, even if you live in a one to four family home, you don't pay the bill, there is a landlord, that landlord still would fall under these residential energy efficiency rebates, okay? So hopefully, maybe if the bills, if you're noticing that it's very cold in the winter, very hot in the summer, maybe everyone who lives in that one to four unit building talks to the landlord and says, look, we think you need to do something here. Let's put in some Wi-Fi thermostats to level off the heat in every unit and set them at a certain temperature. Or maybe the hot water just isn't hot enough or you're finding problems. You can talk to that landlord and have them put in for some rebates online, which of course would increase the property value also. Okay, here's just a copy of what the, our online application looks at, like at National Grid. It's really quite easy. You go right in there. Uh, you put in some basic customer information. You can also take a picture of your, of your receipt, the installation receipt, or with a Wi-Fi thermostat, the barcode, and the, the paid in full receipt for the equipment that you bought, and you can upload it right online. So this process is a lot quicker than what we used to have with the mail-in rebates. Um, it takes about four weeks to receive. Um, your check, as long as you've done everything, put all the information in at once, uh, you would receive a check or a prepaid card within about four week time. Okay, also as a residential customer or the landlord of a one to four unit building, you can go right online to our marketplace. Um, many companies have this. I know PSCG Long Island, the electric company also has this. Uh, I believe Con Ed also has a marketplace where you can go on. Um, I've bought several things from there. I bought a Wi-Fi thermostat, a low flow shower head. And what's great about this, it's kind of like Amazon. Okay, it comes right to your house. You put in your national grid account number and you automatically get the rebate right through the price. No application to fill out, nothing. All you do is put your account number in there. They send you that equipment in the mail. You can install it yourself, and it's at a discounted rate. So that's a phenomenal. I, I really like that. I like to be able to kind of just order things and get things, certain things done. They have water-saving products on here also, connected home and more. Um, so some great, um, just little energy efficiency, things that you can buy online. Okay, so that was our residential rebates, um, which once again is for if you receive your own bill for your utility usage, or if you're a landlord of a one to four family building, all of these little uh, products that you can buy, once again, are to decrease your usage. You would be surprised at just how much the little things that you do can help you save, okay? Um, so even, you know, just giving you an example, when you turn off your lights, your appliances, stereos, things that have that light on and you unplug them, the coffee maker, the microwave on your counter, you unplug those during the day. All of those little things that you do save about $9 a month on your electric bill. Just by using, say, a energy efficient hot water tank, if you have natural gas, you save about $6 a month. I know it doesn't seem a lot right now, but when you add that up over 12 months, it's a big difference. Okay, it really does. You do something for $6 a month, then you turn off lights, that's another few dollars a month. It all adds up, and that's money that you can use then um, for other things, especially with the cost of living these days. Let's get into multifamily rebates. Once again, multifamily is if you are in a building of five or more units and you do not pay your own bills. So, here, 
um, you would have to have that landlord, property manager, someone do that energy efficient work for you, okay? And then they would apply for these uh, discounts. Why do I tell everyone about our multifamily discounts? Because we all have to be part of the change. Um, down here, especially in New York uh, City in the boroughs, we have the Climate Mobilization Act, and our buildings are being tasked with becoming more energy efficient. Even though you may not pay that bill directly, you need to take part in that. We've seen a lot of customers and tenants um, bonding together and forcing the hand of the property management companies or their landlords to make changes in the building to make the building more energy efficient, to put insulation in, to update old non-efficient equipment. So these are something, these are things that you have to work together. And if you know what's out there, then you can help that one landlord and say, hey, I heard on this call that they have these great programs. Now, the one program that we have that is free, at, altogether free for downstate New York with National Grid, I know other companies, Con Ed also has a program, um, PSEG has programs, there are different eligibility requirements, but there are programs out there um, that are direct install measures. Um, so please, once again, check your utility website. But here in downstate New York, we have a multifamily direct install program. We will come into the unit, um, as long as we have your approval, of course, and we will install a high efficiency shower head, low flow shower head, kitchen faucet aerator, bathroom faucet aerators, steam traps. And you ask, well, all those are kind of water measures except for the steam traps. And yes, they are, because water heating uses a lot of energy, and that is a year-round use. So your natural gas bill, the majority of that year-round is heating the water. So if you use less hot water, you're gonna save money on your bill. It also, of course, helps with water conservation, which is another um, big issue that we're fighting here. Steam traps also, those are um, specifically installed throughout the common areas of the building and they help with the efficiency of a steam boiler. That's mostly in downstate New York, especially uh, Brooklyn, Queens, <laughs> you, know, um, that, uh, you know, parts of Staten Island, but mostly here in the city. So that may be not something that you need where you are, but it is something that will help with efficiency. Now, there is also a multi-family uh, direct install pro program upstate New York too. They, again, will do the water measures, the low-flow shower heads and force it aerators. They also look at LED lighting and Wi-Fi thermostats because they do both electric and gas upstate. So that's another, if you're a national grid uh, utility customer, your building has a national, has national grid as their supplier, this is a great free program um, that the landlord management company can take advantage of, okay? So that's free. So that's something the property owner doesn't have to do. So I always find that if you're asking someone to do something, you can give them something for free first. It definitely helps the conversation go better. All right. Also, just so you know, I know this is um, a little out of the line for our renters and, and tenants, um, but as a landlord, a management company, like I said, you're telling them, hey, we, these companies have this great free install. But then also we think that you should also do more work. Maybe replace that boiler that's 20 years old or replace some of the heating, um, the water heating equipment and do some pipe insulation. Well, there's a lot of prescriptive and custom incentives also. So. We encourage the landlords and management companies, especially with climate mobilization, and they have to start benchmarking and meeting certain requirements that they think of planning ahead of time. So these larger projects should be somewhere in the mix. You could do the free install and then use that money also that you're saving on that 
to do some additional work that will help your building become more efficient in the long run. So we're hoping that everyone can use all of that, um, all of these programs. Okay. Um, I know I've spoken a lot. It's 20 after 12. I'm sure a lot of people have some questions. Um, like I said, we have our website hat that has energy saving uh, all of our programs, uh, whether you're a commercial customer, a residential customer. I also tell you, since I am only from National Grid, that every utility company has programs energy efficiency. It's a big um, we spend a lot of money and a lot of time on these programs. Ultimately, our goal is to um, become more efficient, uh, use solar, wind. We're looking at alternate energy, decreasing the carbon, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, we're all in this together, so we encourage everyone to be more energy efficient and, and take advantage of the programs that we have out there for you. Yeah, thank you very much, Carolyn. That was fantastic. And there's a couple of points that I really liked that you made there, especially at the end, um, about us all being in this together. I think that's something we've really tried to um, communicate and also the kind of financial aspects of this. If some of these do mm -hmm. seem daunting, especially if you're working with a landlord um, who might not have put a ton of investment in the building in the past, but this is a way to really make it you know, simple and easy and cost effective for both them and you. So there's a lot of real win-win opportunities here. And I also really liked how you brought up the fact that uh, water efficiency saves energy. Um, that's something we've, we've been trying to communicate a little bit more here, both in terms of the, the water heating and in terms of all the impact of pumping it from the reservoir, getting into the house, putting mm -hmm. it through the wastewater system. Um, you know, water and energy are, are pretty intertwined when it comes to the, a person's carbon footprint. So we'll start yes. getting to the questions soon again. If people do have questions, please, Feel free to type those into the chat box as we go along. We'll get to all of your questions. Um, the first one here is, are there any kind of calculators that you know of for the carbon reduction of various actions? So you mentioned a lot of, you know, everything from simple things to replacing light bulbs to, um, you know, turning down a thermostat to larger ones. Is there anywhere somebody could type in what that action would be and how much of a carbon reduction it would make for them? Um, not that I'm aware of as far as a individual um, decreasing the carbon. I know that there is um, an Energy Star portfolio management tool. That's really for the building as a whole, larger buildings that have to go in there and do New York State benchmarking, where they go in, they put their utility bills, their, the amount of therms and kilowatts that they utilize, and it will tell them how much they have to decrease and what their carbon footprint is based on the usage. So that's something, though, that building as a whole um, would take advantage of. I have not seen anything that cal calculates it for individuals as far as, you know, calculating the carbon. I'm sure that will come down the pipeline um, as this benchmarking and our, our decreasing greenhouse gases comes along. I'm sure that will be pushed down to the individual and we'll have some local tools like that that we would be able to have people utilize. Mm -hmm. And the next question here is, do you have any recommendations for folks that are talking to their landlords about this? Is there any specific way to approach this, um, any kind of talking points that have worked or ways that you found have been effective to get them to um, make some of these upgrades? Yeah. Um, well, and, and here's, and once again, I don't know what territory um, you are in, but here in downstate New York, it's a New York State. Um, buildings are going to um, have huge fines if they do not meet these uh, carbon reductions and energy efficiency goals. So it's a matter of they could be fined a million dollars per year if they don't meet certain requirements. So having that landlord and the management companies really understand exactly what these local laws are, how much money can impact their buildings is really important. We're trying to get the word out, make sure that everybody understands that. And this is something that's definitely going to carry through upstate New York, 
Long Island. This isn't something that will just be New York City. I mean, it's more aggressive down here, um, but that is something that will definitely be increased. And to be honest with you, as a landlord or a property owner, um, you want to stress to them how by making these improvements, it differentiates them from other buildings and that they could, you know, once again, one of the old adages is, um, what makes a building beautiful is not the exterior, but is the occupation rate. You know, buildings, landlords want the building to be occupied. Energy efficiency, environmental impact is very important to everyone that I know, and I'm sure you know. So I think we have to focus on that with that, that building owner and make them aware that it's a very important part of keeping their building full and the tenants happy. Um, energy efficiency also helps with, you know, someone in apartment 1A being too hot and someone in apartment 3A being too cold. If you do that work on your equipment that regulates the temperature, it decreases complaints, which is another thing building owners don't like to have to deal with is, is tenant complaints. So I think if you go from that route, and that's the discussions we've had downstate at least with building owners and landlords, is that these energy efficiency measures not only help, help the greater good and make the tenants happy to live in the building that they're living in, but also decreases costs and decreases complaints. So those are the three that I would focus on. Those are all really good points. And I really like the kind of um, sustainable marketing angle there. And another thing too is um, depending on how energy efficient the apartments are, that's also kind of a selling point of having low operating mm -hmm. costs um, yes. for, for the person who's renting that apartment. Um, Definitely. The next question here is um, probably a little bit outside of what we've been talking about, but it is an interesting one. So we've been talking about energy efficiency measures here. Um, do you know of any utility programs um, that are looking at beneficial electrification of buildings, so things such as heat pumps, um, electric hot water heaters, um, yes. looking at you know, geothermal heating and cooling and things like that, and the fact that that increases the building's load even if it lowers its um, you know, overall carbon footprint? Yes. So beneficial electrification is an important part of uh, each utility. I, I can't really speak specific to that because here in downstate New York, National Grid just does gas, so I don't get involved in the electric portion of it. I know Con Ed has a huge um, group that works on beneficial electrification in National Grid upstate. We are pushing air source heat pumps, geothermal, yes. Even though it increases the load overall, it is a more environmental um, way of of heating your home. So yes, we, we focus on beneficial electrification as a big, a big um, focus for every utility out there, yes. Mm -hmm. The next question here is a little more nuts and bolts for the renter, um, and it's kind of two part here. Where is the most energy efficient spot to live in either a small, um, small house that has maybe three apartments, one on each floor, and in a very large apartment building? What's, are there any kind of efficiencies gained from maybe being higher up and getting heat rising through the building or anything like that? Um, you know, you will see that the upper floors are usually warmer than the lower floors. That's, that's true, but then that works against you in the summer, but it's better in the winter. Um, you also have to see which uh, way your uh, apartment is facing, whether it's south facing, um, which may mean not great in the summer because that does heat up the home because you get more sun. So you would have to remember to, you know, pull down your drapes during the day so it keeps it cooler in your apartment, but then leave the drapes up during the day in the wintertime so you can get that sun coming in to warm up your apartment. So I don't know if necessarily it's that there's one specific better place to live than the other, but knowing those factors within your building and knowing which way your, your apartment faces, um, what floor you're on, just so you can make your own accommodations in your unit to utilize um, the environment to, to the most advantage. 
So not necessarily one best place to live, there's pros and cons of everything, but knowing how to work around that. Mm -hmm. That's really good advice. Um, so we've got one more question here, and if anybody does have more questions, please feel free to type those into the chat box here and we can get to them. Um, the last one that we had come in is, if you were moving into a new apartment, what is the first thing you would do from an energy efficiency standpoint? Okay, so if I was moving into a new apartment, the first thing that I would do is I would be um, looking at the the outside. Granted, if it's a smaller, you know, one to four unit building, I would be looking at the outside, the siding, the windows, the roofing, those the big envelope of the home. Um, inside, like a lot of these big buildings here in downstate New York, what I would be looking at is um, in each apartment um, exactly where is the heat coming from? What kind of a heating system do you have? And looking at the windows, again, windows is where you lose a lot. Um, there's a lot of air infiltration in the windows. So looking at that, looking at the fixtures and start asking um, a few questions about um, the overall building itself, because in a large building like that, you're not going to know, you know, how old the boiler is, what kind of heat do you have, and those all are important questions. But you can get a sense by looking at the windows and the way the building looks, even on the inside, whether it's being maintained and what kind of heating system that you may have. If you see that they're using LED lights and they have low flow fixtures already, in those units, then you know that la that landlord is conscious of energy efficiency and probably has done some additional work, and at least that's a, a feature that he's looking at. Whereas if you don't see any of that and it's an old apartment and it doesn't look like the landlord really cares, then you can start thinking that overall that might not be someone that you can work with as far as getting more efficiency measures in there and that you may have a problem with some uh, you know, getting some upgrades in your unit. Mm -hmm. So that did spark another question here that came in. Um, so there's that plastic film that I think people have used that if they have drafty windows, you kind of use the hair dryer for to kind of seal the window. Does that work mm -hmm. or are there risks with doing that? We've done some studies on that. It does work because it will make a single pane into more of a double pane. But what we have found also is that a lot of that air is coming in around, you know, um, where the caulking of the windows is. So that film, yes, it, it, will it help? Definitely. Um, but if you're getting air coming in around the window itself, um, probably your best bet um, is to buy those curtains that are those thick blackout curtains kind of that will keep the air, the cold air from coming in or the hot air from coming in, um, you know, that's something to start looking at. But yes, will it help? Yes, but not with everything. Mm -hmm. And another question here, um, is there a brochure or anything that's available that you can take to the landlord that tells them about the different energy options there? So any kind of a pamphlet that a designed for a renter to give to their landlord? Um, we are trying to come up with, we have our renter's checklist, so that's something that you can use as a renter to kind of go through and, and ask questions. Um, and if you're finding that things are inefficient, um, we always tell the customer, I mean, the landlord can call up any of our utility companies and we will come out there and have a discussion on things that they can do to make their building more efficient. I know downstate here in New York City, we have uh, through the Mayor's Office of Sustainability, uh, New York City Retrofit. Um, they work directly on one-on-one -on -one with owners um, on how to um, get any incentive for, any kind of money financing for any work that they do. Um, so that is definitely um, something that you can utilize. Do we have anything? No, but that's a great point as far as um, getting a little bit more marketing material. Uh, we've been working, Con Ed and National Grid has been working with the Mayor's Office of Sustainability to try to come up with something like that that, land, that renters can give to landlords. 
and we've been discussing kind of the best way to go about that. So we are in the process, but great point. Mm -hmm. And one more question here. Is there any kind of an energy scorecard for a building or anything in development where a renter could go online and see um, energy efficiency facts about the different uh, apartment buildings that are available? Um, well, that is coming out in 2020 downstate, and I'm sure that's going to be expanding throughout New York State, upstate, and Long Island as well, where um, every building in New York City will be getting a letter code based on their benchmarking, their uh, energy usage. Um, they could have an A rating, they could have a D rating. So you're going to know, just like when you go into a restaurant, you want to eat at an A rated restaurant, not a D rated restaurant. When you walk into a building, you're going to see what the rating is and know right away how efficient that building is based on their energy usage, the efficiency measures that they've taken, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, carbon footprint, um, all that goes into that, and that's through that EPA um, the NG Star Portfolio Manager, um, the buildings have to uh, do their benchmarking. So um, if they are in downstate New York, um, in our territory, uh, that is something that the buildings have to comply with. Uh, the new local law just went through that even buildings 25,000 square feet and above, originally it was only buildings 50, thousand square feet and above, but they've expanded that now also. So you will have a letter grade. I'm sure New York State will be expanding that, like I said, throughout the state. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. That's going to make it a lot easier for renters when they're looking at Definitely. various places. Um, just mm -hmm. in terms of scale, to give people an idea of that, what would a 25,000 square foot building be? Like roughly how many apartments do you think you could fit in that or what would that look like for somebody? Um, that's some of the smaller size buildings, like a 25 to 30 unit building, whereas you have the 50,000 and above, that's your, you know, 150, 200 unit building. So, but pretty much even the affordable housing uh, units downstate will have to take part of that benchmarking. Um, so it is, it is quite a um, adjustment, but I think it's fantastic and will help overall. Yeah, that is great. And with that, I'm not seeing any more questions here. So I want to say thank you very much, um, Carolyn, for presenting today. Yeah. And for thank you. this will be um, record, it's being recorded. It'll be put up on the Green New York website. So you can find it there. Feel free to share it with people once we have the recording up. And um, thank you, Vin. Thank you again, Carolyn. And thank you, everybody, for being on the webinar today. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Yep. Bye, everyone. Bye.